The wait is finally over. The Flash Forge Adventurer 5X finally showed up the other day, so it's time to get it taken out of the box, set up, and see how this thing works. It's been a long time coming. I think we first heard about this machine back in October or November of 2024. We were supposed to see it closer to February or March of this year, and it's now July. So without further ado, let's get this thing unboxed, set up, and put it to use. Looks like we've got our quick start guide, a little thank you card with photos of some of their upcoming machines, as well as their current lineup. We've got a quick start guide for getting the display screen installed. So it seems like they've managed to fit everything you need for this machine within the machine itself, which is pretty cool. It doesn't take up any extra box space. It doesn't leave as much of a mess. Looks like we've got some more snips. Uh, filament cutters, all the tools we need to assemble the machine, and some of the Flash Forge liquid glue. Then, of course, our power cable. Pull this out. We should be able to pull that back. Pull this out. We've got a laughable amount of filament here. I really don't understand why printer companies keep doing this. Not only does it not really work if you're putting it on to the spool holders, but there really isn't enough here to do anything with, like at least include a 250 gram spool. Um, these little 20 gram pouches, they're useless. You're just wasting plastic. Looks like we've got our splitter for the IFS system, which should just click into place there. We'll get that installed in just a minute. I'm not sure what that is because I didn't read the instructions yet. We've got the IFS hub itself. All right, now I know what this is. It's to hold this on the side of the machine. There are two little bolt holes here where this gets attached to the side. And then we've got spool holders, one, two, three, and four. Each of the spool holders have numbers on them that correspond with the numbers on the side of the machine here. So these should just slide down in place there. On the back side of the machine here, there's a little port to install your cable for the IFS itself. So that will go there. The IFS gets mounted over on this side of the machine. And then there's another mating port right here. On the back side here, there are two screw holes and those are used to attach this little clip, which this gets routed up through. And this is the power cable for the IFS. I'm trying to figure out why this why this would install into here, but all of this runs into the spools? Well, that's because I put this bracket on upside down. That's why you gotta read directions first. That works a little better. And then on the inside of the machine, after we're done installing all of these parts on the outside, there are three bolts that we need to remove so the bed can move up and down. There are one in the front over here, one in the front over here, and then one towards the back where this Z-rod is. If you don't remove these, the bed, A, it can't go up and down, and B, you run the risk of uh, ruining the machine. It's not good for the motors. Then our hub piece part needs to be attached into here. Looks like that's able to freely move around. And we've got four PTFE tubes that lead to the hub. And according to the instructions, it doesn't matter how these are attached, as long as they are attached. Basically ready to go. We just got to get the screen installed. All right. And that's the setup of the 85X. Next up is plugging it in, getting it turned on, getting it all set up on our Wi-Fi, and then we can take a look at the slicer and see how all this works. It 
If you decide to bind it to a FlashMaker account, you can scan the QR code there and do that. I'm gonna skip that step and leave it set up on LAN mode. So right now the device is gonna go through its initial calibrations, do a bed leveling, vibration compensation, and then we should be able to connect it to the slicer and see how that's all set up. I do believe you can use Orca Slicer with this as well as their fork of Orca, Orca Flash Forge. As soon as I insert the filament into slot one, it starts auto loading, which is nice. I'm gonna do the same thing with slot two. All right, and then I should be able to edit this, tell it PLA, color is black, and then slot two is also PLA, and this one is white. All right, and we can hit next. And it looks like it's gonna start printing a test model, so we will let it do its test model and see how this comes out. Looks like it's the FlashForge logo. So one thing that's super noticeable right off the bat, if you've ever used the 85M Pro or the Adventure 5M, the fan noise, it's almost non-existent. And usually when either of those machines are just on, the fan noise is pretty loud. This is really quiet. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear that through the microphone, but I'm, I'm very happy with how they've toned down the fan noise on this one because honestly, that was like the biggest drawback to the Flash Forge machines prior to this was just how loud that fan noise is. It's not even loud, it's just a high pitch noise, so it can get pretty annoying, but they seem to have fixed that with this one. One other thing that seems to have changed with this is the initial prime line or the purge line is in the back now. Instead of it moving up front here, it purges the filament in the back and then immediately does that line. So you're not risking dragging any filament anywhere. That's really cool. All right, so I've got a stopwatch going. See how long it takes for this thing to go through a filament change. I will say it's been white since the first filament change, so definitely need to tune those flushing settings. The last three purges, I guess I'll call it, have all been pure white, so definitely is more than is needed. A little over two minutes to do the full filament change. Now that is something we can fix when we go into the slicer. We'll adjust the flushing settings to get a little bit less time. There's no reason for it to flush as much as it did. And that was from black to white. So that is pretty much as much as it's gonna ever need to flush out would be my guess. All right, so 16 minutes later, we've got our first print on the 85X. We can click okay so we don't print it again. And you can see what I mean by uh, the purge line, prime line is now in the back of the plate instead of up here on the front where it usually is. And we've got our first print. I do believe it tried to do some ironing right here and I've never had great success with ironing, but 16 minutes later, not too bad. All right, so now I wanna get this thing connected into our slicer so we can adjust some of the settings and obviously send prints over to the machine. Now, the one problem with Orca Slicer is you don't have any access to the device, like the user interface for the device or anything. So it does look like we'll have to use Orca Flash Forge if we wanna have control over the IFS system. I have seen a couple videos. I will link one down below from Figure Feedback where he used Orca Slicer to control the 85X. But one of the things he did point out was that you don't have any access to the backend uh, user interface in Orca Slicer. And in order to make the filament swap over like it should, you have to set your filament in the slicer as one, two, three, and four. So filament number one in the slicer has to be what is on spool number one. Filament number two has to be what's on spool number two and so on. So I've got the 85X connected to Orca Flash Forge and we can see in the back end here, if we go to the device tab, we've got 85X and we've also got access to our IFS system that shows PLA and PLA. We've also got access to our file list so we're able to see what's on the machine 
It doesn't come with a camera installed from the factory. You can purchase one for 30 or $40 from FlashForge's website and install that yourself. If we had the camera, it would appear here in the center screen. Now yours probably won't look like this unless you're running on a Mac in dark mode. Windows works a little bit better for Orca FlashForge anyway. So if we add a couple spools of filament, looks like we've got both of the Elegoo PLA installed in here. So I'm gonna choose my profiles for the 85M. And then we have flushing volumes. So I am gonna tell it that slot one is black and slot two is white. You can see from black to white, it's got a very high 562 millimeters cubed flushing volume. I'm gonna lower that down to 200 and we can put white to black around 100. That should significantly cut not only our purge volume down, but also the time it takes for the machine to swap colors. And then I'm just gonna add a little test cube here. Nothing super fancy. I just wanna see how it does with that color change. So we're gonna call, I'll just type in 85X. So this should be about a 12 minute print. I'm gonna send this off to the machine and you'll notice in Orca FlashForge, if we hit print, we've got the ability to choose the printer that we want to use, as well as the filament slots we wanna use as well. So we've got 85X selected. We'll have it do bed leveling and enable the IFS system. We'll let it do its thing. I am gonna time it again to see how long the filament change actually takes to see if we've actually cut down on some time. But aside from that, we will pop back in when it goes to do the filament change. Then we'll take a look at the results. All right, so starting the timer back up, see how long it takes for the filament swap to do its thing. I don't really understand that because we cut it from 594 down to 200 for the flushing volume. So that should have basically cut a third off of our time, which it didn't. So maybe play around with that a little bit more. It could probably even be around 150 for the flushing volumes. Because as you could see, there was white filament coming out of the nozzle within the first purge cycle. There was no reason for it to do another three of them. So maybe it's just purging less per cycle, but I would, I would hope that cutting the flushing volumes down would not only cut how much filament it's purging out, but the time as well, because the time is what really adds up. I'm not really too concerned about wasting a little bit of filament, but if I can save 30 seconds or a minute and have it do what it just did there, that would be much better. So maybe we'll bump it down to about 100, 150 millimeters cubed for the next one. This 200 still seems like it's far too high. All right, print number two is all finished up. A Little bit of over extrusion on the top there. I haven't dialed in the filament settings for this machine yet. I was just using the stock ones from the 85M, which should be pretty similar, but there's always a chance that there's something slightly different about this newer machine than what we had over on the 85M. All right, so that's the initial unboxing and a first look at the brand new Adventure 5X from FlashForge. A huge thank you again to FlashForge for sending this machine over. It's been a long time coming. If you're interested in picking up the 85X, I have links down in the description below so you can do that. It is currently on sale right now for under $400, and that's a steal of a price, especially considering everything is all included, the machine and the IFS for under 400 bucks. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna put this machine to the test against the P1P from Bamboo Lab and the Anycubic Cobra S1. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, Go ahead and give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you enjoy this type of content and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.